Now we're going to talk about the properties of kites. We're at 6.6a, deep in the middle of chapter 6, with 14 videos before this one in the, in the geometry playlist if you need them. A kite is a quadrilateral with exactly two pairs of congruent consecutive sides. So remember, they're congruent, they're the same length, and they're consecutive, so they're next to each other, okay? And so are these. They're next to each other. You would have this segment and then this segment, see, if we were to go around. And its diagonals are not congruent. We can see AC is much longer than BD, okay? If a quadrilateral had only one pair of consecutive sides, it would have been a rhombus. This has two pairs. And if a quadrilateral had congruent diagonals, it would be a rectangle. These are not congruent, so it's a kite. So here's the properties of kites. Our first theorem says, if a quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are perpendicular. So AC is perpendicular to BD. And we would read it geometric notation as, or write it in a proof, kite, therefore diagonals perpendicular. Our next theorem says if a quadrilateral is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So B and D are congruent, but A and C are not. Hmm. A is open much more than C. We'd write geometric notation as kite, therefore one pair opposite angles congruent. All right? So here's a proof with theorem 662, this one with the opposite angles being congruent. So take a look at this diagram here. It says JKLM is a kite with segment JK is congruent to segment JM. We see the congruent marks. And it says that KL is congruent to ML. We need to prove that angle K is congruent to angle M, but we also need to prove that angle KJM is not congruent to K angle KLM, that side. So the first thing we're going to do is prove this part, that angle K is congruent to angle M. And it's given that segment JK is congruent to segment JM and that KL is congruent to ML. Well, by the reflexive property of congruence, JL is congruent to JL. We know about that, don't we? This segment JL for this upper triangle is congruent to this segment JL for this lower triangle. So if it's telling us that this is congruent, this is congruent, and this is congruent, well, that means triangle JKL is congruent to triangle JML by side, side, side. So angle K is congruent to angle M by CPCTC. Congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now we're going to prove that this angle is not congruent to this angle, okay? So if angle KJM were congruent to angle KLM, then both pairs of opposite angles are congruent because we just proved that these two are congruent. If these were congruent, well, then we'd have both pairs of opposite angles as congruent. And this would mean that angle JKLM is a parallelogram but this contradicts the given fact that JKLM is a kite. Therefore, angle J KJM is not congruent to angle KLM. Okay? You can only have one pair of opposite angles that are congruent, right? Okay? And take a look at this kite. So here we have a kite. And we can see that this section from QT is 13 inches. We can see that this section from PT is 16. And this is identical because this is coming right down the middle, isn't it? And from T to S is 22 inches, all right? So Emma made a kite by placing wooden sticks along the diagonals and attaching fabric to them. And to finish, Emma needs to add a cloth binding around the outer edge. And there's two yards of binding per package. So what's the total amount of binding needed to cover the edges? And how many packages should Emma buy? So the answer has two parts. We need to find the length to cover the edges, and we need to know how many packages. So we're going to make a plan. And the diagonals are perpendicular. So there are four right triangles. We can use the Pythagorean theorem and properties of kites to find side lengths and lengths to find perimeter. We'll add the lengths, okay? So I want to do this really quick for those of you 
that need it, so I don't want you to get lost. We know the Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, it doesn't matter which side we put the equal c squared on. We can put it here, okay? To get rid of this little 2 exponent, we put a radical sign around the other side, don't we? So we would have c equals the square root of a squared plus b squared, okay? So that's how we get this. We don't have an exponent here, so we put the radical sign around that side. So pq, let's look at pq. See if I can get it to focus. So pq is this hypotenuse right here. So we know that this is this squared is equal to this squared plus this squared. But now that we took our little exponent off the pq, we need to do a square root of 16 squared plus 13 squared. Okay? That's how I got this. And we do the math and get square root of 425, which equals 5 square root of 17 inches. Now, let's look at rq. Well, if pq is 5 square root of 17 inches, this has got to be the same, right? See? It's going to be the same measure. So we know rq is also 5 square root of 17 inches. So now let's find ps. So ps is this one down here, okay? And if you look, that's the hypotenuse, and then we've got one leg that's 16 inches and another leg that's 22 inches. So we need to do PS is equal to the square root of 16 squared plus 22 squared, and that's going to equal the square root of 740, which is equal to 2 square root of 185 inches. And if this is 2 square root of 185, then this is 2 square root of 185, isn't it? If we add up all those measures, we get it approximately 95.6 inches. And one package of binding contains two yards, well, that's six feet, which would be 72 inches, because there's 12 inches in a foot, right? We could do 95.6 divided by 72, and it's approximately 1.3 packages. So to have enough binding, Emma will need to buy two packages. Now, we also could have changed the side lengths into decimals and rounded them. So 5 square root of 17 is approximately 21, and 2 square root of 185 is approximately 27. We had 2 of these, so we'd have 2 times 21. We had 2 of these, so we'd have 2 times 27. We add them together, and it's about 96. So it's about what we got, okay? So either way, it would have worked. Here's using properties of kites. Let's take a look at the diagram first. We can see that we have a kite here. We have E, F, G, H, and the measure of angle F, E, J, this orange one right here, is 25 degrees, and the measure of angle F, G, J, this green one, is 57 degrees, okay? We're looking for the red one, G, F, J, all right? So the measure of angle F, J, G is 90 degrees. That's right there. Kite diagonals are perpendicular. That was from our first theorem right here, okay? That the diagonals are going to be perpendicular. And the measure of angle GFJ, the red one, plus the measure of angle FGJ, the green one, is going to equal 90 degrees because acute angles of right triangles are complementary. We know it has to total 180 degrees inside because of the triangle sum theorem. That's 90, so if G is 57, then all we need is whatever is left over from the 90, or even from 180 if we add this angle and that angle, right? So we add these two angles, it should equal 90 degrees because acute angles of right triangles are complementary. Well, FGJ is 57 degrees. We can substitute that in and subtract it from both sides and get that the measure of angle GFJ is 33 degrees. So we know that red one is 33 degrees, okay? Now, same diagram. I just moved it down a little bit, okay? Now we're looking for this red angle, okay? It's the measure of angle JFE. So it goes from here up and here. So we're looking for that red angle. 
Triangle FJE, the one that includes that red angle, is also a right triangle. So the measure of angle JFE plus the measure of angle FEJ, we know that that one was 25 degrees, wasn't it? The orange one, okay? So they'll equal 90 degrees. So by substituting the 25 degrees in for FEJ, we'll find that the measure of angle JFE is 65 degrees. We substitute the 25 in, we subtract 25 from both sides, and get that the measure of angle JFE is equal to 65 degrees. Okay? Okay, now we have the measure of angle GHE. So that's going to be this big angle down here. And the measure of this angle is congruent to the measure of the one on the top, right? Because if it's a kite, then one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So these two would be congruent. And this one down here, the measure of angle GHE, is equal to that one up there. Because that's the definition of congruent angles, right? If they're congruent, they're equal. And the measure of angle GFE, this one up here, is equal to GFJ this one that we found right here that was 33 degrees plus this one right here that we just found was 65 degrees and if we add the 33 plus 65 we get 98 and if these are congruent then GHE must be 98 degrees okay so kites are squares because they're both quadrilaterals and both have perpendicular bisectors they're like squares, okay? But squares have all four sides the same length, don't they? And kites don't. All right? Our next lesson is isosceles trapezoid theorem and the trapezoid mid-segment theorem. Then we're going to construct a kite with a compass before moving on to the next chapter, ratios, okay? In similar polygons, all right? So we're almost to the next chapter. I hope this made sense for you, and I hope the colors I use help you when I'm doing these angles, because I know they can become very confusing. So keep trying. Keep your chin up. I believe in you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.